Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah over here from Intellis Solutions. I am so excited to finally have the team gathered around to talk about jet analytics for you guys today. Um, it's something that's been on our list of things to do for quite some time. So happy the stars finally aligned to get Danica and Andrew and Matthew on the line to share some of their expertise. So with that, I am going to bow out, keep my eye on those Q&As, and Andrew, if you want to go ahead and share your screen and feel free to introduce your team um, and let's go ahead and get started, guys. Perfect. Thanks so much, Sarah. Yep. I'm going to share my screen here in just a second. Yeah. So thank you for, for introducing us and thank you for having us. Um, everyone who has joined, um, really appreciate your time. Um, like Sarah mentioned, we want to make this really laid back and as you know, educational and conversational as, as we can. So feel free to pop any questions that come up in the chat. We're happy to help and and answer those. We'll have some time, hopefully, you know, we go through this pretty quickly as an overview, but we'll have some time at the end to answer those as well. Um, so to that end, what I'm going to do is introduce the team. Um, we'll go through a couple slides, but really want to get into the good things. So um, we'll kind of get started here. I'm going to share my screen. You should be able to see that. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to turn my camera off here. All right. So today we're going to talk about jet analytics. That's going to be the big focus here today. Okay, um, you know, reporting is is a very vital part of that PA process, right? Reporting, um, general reporting and analytics. Uh, so today we're gonna really dive into the analytics side of things, you know, getting the most out of your data and locking that data um, so that you can get uh, you know key insights, um, really dive and interact with with uh, the data that you're accruing every day. Okay, so that's gonna be the topic of discussion today. Um, Today we're going to, let's see. So my name is Andrew Pearson. I am a senior channel manager over here at Insight Software. Um, I've been working with the Jet products, um, Jet Reports, Jet Analytics, and BizView Planning uh, for three years now. Um, so I've been uh, working really closely with the team over at Intellis. Uh, you know, I've known the team for the entirety of my career over here for three years. So Danica has been an awesome resource for me. Um, she's been with Intellis for 16 years, working um, specifically with Dynamics customers. So, you know, with the wealth of knowledge that she has, it's been great working with her. Um, in addition, I have my uh, colleague and friend, uh, and senior solutions engineer, uh, Matthew Fisher. He's been with uh, Jet and Insight Software for upwards of five years now. So he's a, he's a really awesome resource for when it comes to analytics and business intelligence. He uh, really runs that uh, side of things over here for us at uh, jet. So that's the team here. Um, and I'm going to kind of go forward with our agenda. Uh, we've met the team. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about Insight Software and the jet products just really quickly. Um, then we're going to get into, okay, so you know, what's the difference between just reporting, right? Either native reporting tools out of Dynamics, Jet Reports, and analytics, right? How do we kind of delineate where we're going to graduate into uh, analytics and BI solution? Um, after that, we're going to go through some uh, demonstrations, um, kind of go through some templates and, and how to build reports, um, and really just the key benefits of uh, a full BI and analytics solution. Um, after that, um, as we mentioned, we'll have you know, a, a live chat and, and Q&A to answer any of the questions that either pop up in, in the chat or, or that uh, you know, come up through, through the conversation and discussion um, in the presentation. Okay, so a little bit about um, a little bit about Insight Software and Jet. Uh, we, you know, we have an entire suite of solutions that are built specifically for the office of the CFO, right? So that's you know reporting, live reporting, getting dynamic data into Excel, um, analytics, of course, that's what we're going to talk about today, and you know planning platforms um, for planning and budgeting. Okay, so we want to make it as easy as possible for um, organizations to get to that data. Um, you know, drive greater financial intelligence across that organization and, um, and, and really enable you as the end users to make sense of the data, um, make, you know, the best business decisions you can off of that data, okay? We have, you know, 28,000 plus customers. Um, we're growing over here at Insight Software, a lot, uh, thousand plus employees. And we have headquarters in Raleigh, but we have offices around, around the country. Um, Matthew and I are currently sitting up here in Portland, Oregon, um, out in the Pacific Northwest. Um, and I know that Danica is out there in Maryland, where I'm actually from originally. So that's where we all sit today. 
um, a little bit about the jet products, whether you're a current jet customer today or you know, looking at um, getting a little bit more robust with reporting and you know, getting that data from your data sources into um, an environment where you can you know, really make sense of it. Uh, you know, Jet has been around for 20 years, right? Um, we've been building our solutions for uh, Microsoft Dynamics specifically. So they're purpose built for Dynamics, whether it's GP, Business Central, Cloud, on-premise, NAV. Um, we've been building our, our connections and our um, solutions for those ERPs specifically. Okay? So we want to give you complete total data access to all of your operational data, all of your financial data, um, really anything that lives within your data sources. We want to uh, be able to allow you to have access to that um, and make key decisions off of that data. A couple of pieces that I wanted to talk about here is um, you know, data never stops growing. right? <clears throat> One of the things about about data and about running an organization or a company is that each and every day that you're open, you know, even overnight, you're accruing data, right? It's growing, it's always getting bigger. And, you know, some of the key aspects of that is how do we put our arms around that data, right? How do we, um, how do we make sense of it um, as it gets bigger and bigger um, within your data sources? And that's what we're going to talk about today, okay? Um, just the size of data, whether it's from one source or disparate data sources. Um, or, you know, systems within your organization. How do we put our arms around that and, uh, you know, um, consolidate that for reporting? Um, you know, with, with general reporting, um, you're going against uh, a data source, right? Your Dynamics ERP to get that data into Excel in this case. Uh, what we're going to also talk about today, another key piece is governing that data, right? Optimizing that for reporting and governing the data. Um, what I mean by governing the data is, you know, kind of a single source of truth, right? We want to make sure that the decisions being made, whether it's different departments or different locations within the organization, it's all going to be, um, those decisions are going to be made from the same data, right? Because, you know, making decisions off of bad data is not great, right? So we're going to talk about governing that data, making sure um, it's one single version of the truth and optimizing that data for reporting. Um, you know, truly what we want to get out of this today is, how do we make our organizational data work for you, right? As I mentioned before, huge data sets, always growing every day. How are we going to make that data work for you? You know, it should, rather than just static, uh, static data from day to day, how are we going to kind of interact and, and drive decisions from, from more meaningful data points, okay? So today, um, this is our suite of, of uh, solutions for what I mentioned before, the office of the CFO, right? In quotations, um, Jet Reports, uh, Jet Analytics, and BizView. We're gonna be focusing on analytics today, but I think I'd be uh, remiss if I didn't talk about Jet Reports, right? Um, so Jet Reports is basically, for those of you who don't know, is a direct connection to um, Dynamics or uh, a data source to get that data um, as a conduit into Excel, right? Because you know, we know finance users live and breathe in Excel. They need to be able to get that data into uh, a workbook so that they can then customize it, work with the data, and, um, you know, have reporting, right? Um, so Jet Reports allows you to have access to anything that lives in the database, right? All of your operational tables and fields, all of your financial tables and fields, dimensions um, for your reporting needs, okay? One of the big pieces there is that you're eliminating a lot of those errors where if you're using a native reporting tool or you know, something that uh, you have to upload or copy and paste into the worksheet, um, you know, a lot of that functionality uh, can be lost in, in the mix, right? So we want to get you directly, your data directly into the Excel spreadsheet. So that's the big piece, Jet Reports directly against the data source, okay? What we're talking about today and what we're going to focus on is Jet Analytics, okay? So one cool piece is that it's not um, a different interface from one to the other, right? So Jet Analytics is going to use Jet Reports to get to the data, but what you're reporting from is what is considered a data warehouse and a set of business intelligence cubes. Okay, the difference being is that your data is fully optimized. This is where the data model on the back end becomes really important, right? Fully optimized for reporting, um, it's normalized, meaning your end users, um, you know, only have to visit, uh, well, visit less tables and fields to to get to that data, right? And you're able to. Kind of slice and dice, um, interact with the data. Um, KPIs become really important, right? Um, how's our business doing today? How can I just click one button and see how I'm doing from yesterday to today? Things like that, okay? So um, rather than going direct, you're going 
uh, reporting against a data warehouse in Cubes. And I guess for those who don't know what a data warehouse is, a data warehouse is kind of how it sounds. It's a, it's a warehouse for your data, right? One of the, one of the kind of examples that I always like to, like to say is it's sort of like an Amazon warehouse, right? An Amazon warehouse is completely organized and optimized. So There's huge, massive warehouses, right? Well, this is not a huge, massive warehouse, but, um, you know, orders come in, millions of orders come in a day, right? Um, and then they need to be returned for data, right? Or, you know, the orders need to be sent out. So everything's very organized and optimized. And that's kind of an example I like to say. Um, data visualization, right? Dashboarding, using things such as Power BI um, are becoming really popular. Uh, you know, organizations, yes, you know, they need to have your tabular reports in Excel, um, but also, you know, across departments, um, you know, some of the leadership teams, maybe they just want to take a peek at a dashboard and see, okay, how are we doing today? How, how am I going to visualize this data, right? So um, data analytics really powers that, that whole sort of um, process of visualizing the data. You know, I'm a visual learner. If I take a peek at a chart or a graph and I see, okay, this is how we're doing today. It looks like we're doing great. That's really good for me, okay? So that's sort of what we're going to be talking about with analytics here. Uh, you know, a couple of other pieces we, you know, I mentioned it before is, you know, accurate data, governed data for one version of the truth. That's what we're trying to get to. You know, maybe we're pulling from multiple um, softwares, right, into the data warehouse and cubes. You, you know, no organization runs off with just one piece of software these days. So we want to govern that, put our arms around that data into one place so that, you know, for consolidated reporting, but one version of the truth reporting. That becomes really, really key to making business decisions. Um, lastly, you know, I guess just as a teaser, but we have, um, we're not going to focus on this, but we have BizView planning. Um, and what that is, it integrates with uh, Jet Reports and Analytics, and it's a full, um, you know, cloud-based uh, planning, forecasting, and budgeting tool. Okay. Um, and that's built, again, specifically for Dynamics um, and, and kind of offers you that, that planning side of things. So that whole FP&A process, reporting, analytics, and planning, you're going to have under one kind of uh, belt here. All right. So um, what we're going to do now is I'm going to hop into Excel. Okay. Well, in my plan here today is kind of go through jet reports really quickly and kind of show you the difference between building, <clears throat> excuse me, building a report and jet reports, and then getting really, you know, unlocking your data, getting deeper into that data with Jet Analytics. So I'm going to do a couple examples there. Then I'm going to hop into uh, some examples of, okay, data modeling. How do we get to that place where we're, we're making it easier on ourselves, um, you know, to interact with our data? And then um, I'll pass it over to Matthew for a quick backend demonstration. So let me close out here. I'm going to switch screens. I have lots of screens here into my Excel. All right. So for those of you who are familiar with Jet, um, you should notice this is the Jet Excel add-in, right? Um, this is how we're getting to the data. Um, what we're going to do is, is pull an example with Jet reports, and I'm going to kind of juxtapose that against um, examples with analytics. So you can kind of see the difference between, okay, here's general reporting. Um, and then here's how we get to that data and, and make it work for us, right? Um, so the first example I'm going to do, and this is Jet Reports, okay? So we're doing the difference between Jet Reports and Analytics here. Jet Reports, I'm going to use something called Fast Financials, right? So this is going to be able to get to your data really quickly. Um, so we're going to pull in basically a PL. and uh, You can simply just you know, grab my assets, scroll down to maybe my like 40,000 accounts, right? Maybe I want to grab this data here pull it into my worksheet and have a PL, right? So what we're doing here is we're querying uh, using Jet Reports, we're querying the, the NAV database or Business Central or GP, right? All the same, um, pulling it directly into the worksheet as a PL. Okay, so it's going to query that database. You're seeing it think. And now we have a report, right? So you know again, you can format it, do anything that you want in here, which some of you may be familiar with. Whoops. Some of you may be familiar with, but uh, you know, when we run this, we have our PL, we have our report options, right? You can split between global dimensions, start and end dates, which are really important, choose between different companies. But, you know, you have that extra step of having to run this, which is okay, right? And there's a graduation rate when, you know, this is fine, but what if we want to get deeper insights into our data, right? So this is a PL. 
you know, everything's in here. You can make it look great, format it however you want. But really, you know, this is fairly static, right? So I'm going to open up an example of what it would look like in analytics, okay? So here is, um, I'm going to switch over to my data source. So bear with me here while I kind of update my data source in here. Because again, we're going against that data warehouse and cubes, right? So update my data source, get in here. I pulled that information, that last example using Jet Reports. And now once we're connected here, the analytics, I'll kind of show you how you can play around with the data. Get in there, interact with it, and get more of like a, a dashboardy um, business intelligence um, view into your data. So in this report, we have trial balances, right? All of this is coming from the data warehouse and the cubes. You're able to get in here. It's really quick, right? We can get in here and interact with the data. This is all of my liabilities, assets, basically what I pulled before. But now we have things such as balance sheets, right? Come in here, drop these down. We have everything so that you can just simply go between different companies, right? So we have two different companies. Maybe we want to just look at the UK. Maybe we want to switch over to the USA those types of things, right? In addition to this, you know, we're dropping these all down. In addition to this, you have the ability to have kind of a more of a dashboard look into this and switch between global dimensions, um, your companies, things like that. And really what we're looking at here is the ease of use and the speed of which we're getting to this data, okay? Um, these are all dropping down. They're all looking into your um, into your ERP, into Dynamics, um, to pull into the worksheet. Um, but what we're doing is we're 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 able to kind of come in here and and pull anything that we want almost immediately. Okay. So the same goes for um, your operational data, like sales data, things like that. We can go ahead and build something out really quickly. And I'll kind of pull an example here. So let me open up a new sheet. Okay. Um, what we're looking at here is a pivot table. You don't have to use a pivot table to get to the data warehouse um, and uh, cubes, but I think that this is kind of a good look into this. So what if I, what if I wanna get pull a sales report, right? What if I wanna get something really complex, start kind of interacting with the data and building out sort of um, a more uh, flexible report, okay? Uh, over here, I have my cube, and this is off of my data warehouse and cube. Um, I can go ahead and pull things such as you know, sales. Maybe I want to do profit, profit percent, um, average unit cost, right? Now we have our numerical values in here. That's great, but we need to give that context, right? Um, what you'll notice is that it's pulling immediately, right? And that's the really cool part is that all of this data is pre-calculated, right? We have things like discount percentages and profit percentages. All of that is um, calculated on the back end, so you don't have to build those into your reports which is a huge, huge time saver. Um, but let me come down here. Maybe we're selling things. Maybe we're, you know, maybe we have services or, um, you know, whatever the business runs off of, right? In this case, it's gonna be items and hard goods. So we can simply just pull that open. What you'll notice is that all of these hierarchies, this is built into the backend data model. So that's why we're able to get really granular with the data, okay? So we have bags and totes, the different types of plastic bags and totes, and then all the different ones that we sell, okay? Maybe we wanna see this year over year, right? We don't have to tell it to go back in and, and grab year over year because that's built into the model. Say, I come down here, we have a hierarchy of year, quarter, month, and day, and now we have year over year, okay? Now we can slice and dice this, and this is what I was talking about um, in terms of you know interacting with your data, slice it up by year, I mean, we can do anything we want, right? Global dimensions, all kinds of different things. Um, maybe I'll do like salesperson and then maybe location. You know, this is stuff is, this stuff's hard to get to um, this quickly, right? If we're just doing general reporting, okay? Um, you know, in addition to this, if we wanna throw in some sort of a graph, we can do that. You know, like I mentioned before, visual, data visualization is really important here. Uh, so in this case, maybe I just want to look at 2017 versus 2018, right? Maybe I want to look at my different locations. So I'm going to look at Atlanta. Boom. This is Atlanta. This is 2017 versus 2018. Maybe I just want to see Mary's numbers, right? So it's really fast. All of this data is pre-calculated and optimized for reporting. And as an end user, all you have to do is look at what I want to pull into the report. Okay. Maybe I don't want average price. I want average unit cost, right? So it's really quick. 
um, to be able to get key insights off of your data. Okay, this is not vertical specific, right? In this example, this is you know, selling hard goods, right? This is selling items and things like that. But what happens if we're, you know, what happens if we have events or what happens if we're, you know, a nonprofit and we have, um, I don't know, awards that we need to spread out or look into encumbrance. Those are all things that are built into this data model. So remember, you know, your data is gonna be pulling into here and your work with our team and Intellis to really build this out for your organization. So this is one example but your data would work for you um, in this example. So I uh, just wanted to mention that, okay? So I did some examples there. I did jet reports. Okay, we're getting to the data, pulling it in. We went uh, to the jet analytics side of things to kind of give you a, a, just, a, just a taste of you know, what you can do with the data there off of the data warehouse and cubes. But you know, a lot of times this is where it's, okay, so you showed us the front end. How does this get done, right? And so I want to really uh, quickly cover uh, what's happening with the data modeling on the back end and why it's really important as your data grows, right? Every day you're a business, your data is growing, what we're doing on the back end. So I'm going to switch uh, my screens. I'm going to go back to my presentations really quickly, right? I don't want to bore you too much with that, but I'm going to go back to my presentation and talk about the data model optimization with Jet Analytics. Okay, I don't want to get super technical here, but I think it's really important to see what's under the cover, right? How do we get to this point? Um, so we talked about going from raw data to an optimized data set for reporting. We talked about just general reporting down here, right? Going into full business intelligence. All right. So if we start over here on the left, um, the left of blue rectangle. That's a database, right? A database is an app. A database is really any piece of software that gathers data. Um, most databases are relational databases. They have tables and fields that relate to each other. And that's where kind of the complexity comes into play, right? It's a complex data model. Um, what we want to do is normalize that. We want to make it easier for the business um, to make sense of it, to make sense of your data. We want to make it e as easy as possible for the end users to get to that data. So if you move to the middle here, this is that data warehouse I was talking about, right? It's uh, organized, it's optimized. We're bringing only relevant data um, into the data warehouse. We're organizing it by subject matter. And you know, in some cases, you have other uh, sets of data that you need to tie into that, blend into your ERP data, right? That's what we're doing here. Okay, so rather than thousands of tables and fields that end users have to sift through to make sense of the data, um, we are going to be cutting that down. So maybe you just have a table for inventory, one for um, payables, one for receivables, uh, one for sales, right? All my sales data lives in that sales uh, table, things like that. So we're really kind of consolidating that data, organizing it for you, and we're making it easier to get to. Um, we take it one step further over here at the, the, the last um, rectangle on the right. These are BI cubes, okay? Not to get really technical here, but I mean, if you look up there, it looks like a Rubik's cube. And so we're gonna be able to slice and dice, twist and turn the data, really gain key insights, um, build in calculations, and create dimensionality to the data. <clears throat> when I say dimensionality, what you saw at that last, um, example, you know, I brought in numerical values, but then I uh, brought in context by bringing in um, things such as location, right? Posting dates, salespeople, and I gave context to those numerical values really quickly. So that's what I mean by a cube, right? So you have dimensionality to your data. You're able to look at that data in different angles and different ways than you were before, okay? Um, this, you know, <laughs> An analytics presentation wouldn't be complete without a quick flow chart, right? You want to see what's happening with the data. Um, over here, you know, this is, could be our, our NAV data source, Business Central, SL, you know, whatever uh, Dynamics database you have, right? Built off of SQL, okay? We're connecting to that. Um, and, and again, you could be using other databases and that, that's why these are up here, right? But we're connecting to that with the Jet Data Manager. This becomes really important. Um, to kind of take a peek under the hood. How are we getting to this front end, um, you know, the front end ease of reporting? The Jet Data Manager um, is an ETL tool. You know, this is more of a IT function, right? So the end users won't be using the Jet Data Manager. I always like to preface it with that. Um, but what you'll find is that the IT group really loves the Jet Data Manager. It makes it so much easier to model the data, blend the data, um, to present for end users, such as the finance team, okay? Um, ETL which is the Jet Data Manager, stands for Extract, Transform, and Load, okay? So we're extracting data, 
right? From one or multiple ever-growing databases, remember? And then we're tra uh, transforming that um, in the staging database. Right? That's where you know, you're bringing your data, making it work for you um, and optimizing that. And then we're loading it into the data warehouse and cubes. So that's the data flow, okay? Taking it from your complex data models, really making it easier in the Jet Data Manager, right? We're, we're kind of uh, normalizing it, um, cleaning it up, and then we're loading that into an area where your end users will access that. And so you're accessing the data using you know, the Jet Reports Excel add-in, which I showed you. Um, you can access that with Power BI as well. And um, it makes it you know, an open book, right? Um, you can use any reporting later, reporting layer or data visualization tool to sit on top of that. And so we'll go through some examples here in just a moment. But um, I, what I'm going to do now is pass controls over to uh, my senior solutions engineer, uh, Matthew Fisher, just for a really quick back end look. And I want to preface that again with, you know, the thing, the Jet Data Manager that he's going to show is really an IT function, right? It's uh, it's managed, um, and it's it's not something that an end user will be going into from a day to day basis, but. Uh, you know, maybe I need to see a data point in my data warehouse and cubes, right, for reporting. This is where you're going to be manage, managing that and making it um, easier to use. So I'm going to hop out of there. Let's see if I can make Matthew the presenter. Or Matthew, are you able to share your screen? Um, I think you might need to stop sharing. Okay, that's probably what Try that. Okay. Host disabled participant screen sharing. So I think, uh, Sarah, you might need to make me the host. Oh, there we go. I got gotcha. you. Thanks, Andrew. Hey, there we go. All right. Can you all see my screen okay? Yep. Okay. All right. Excellent. Well, thanks, Andrew. Uh, so like like Andrew said, I'm going to I'm going to go through um, the Jet Data Manager, which is our ETL automation tool. So what I'll show you is kind of what uh, what goes into making that that back end data model and what what makes it so easy to to consume that data. That's really the name of the game with a with a, an ETL tool like this or any kind of BI solution is making your data more accessible to end users. Right. You don't want end users to have to map multiple tables together. You don't want them to have to understand data structures. Uh, some of them do, uh, but, but oftentimes they don't. You know, that's, that's not their function, particularly uh, finance people. You know, they're, they're in the system. They wanna, um, uh, they're running financial statements. They're not joining tables together, right? So we're gonna take that burden off from the end user and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna do all of that data constructing here on the back end. So what I'm going to go through is uh, just a few examples of how we can uh, add additional data points into the, the backend data model, both from within your, your regular ERP, like your, your business central. And then also I'll go through an example of adding an additional data source uh, that's outside of business central. Uh, maybe you have a CRM system or something like that, that, that you want to bring data in. And then uh, finally, I'll, I'll go through a quick example of kind of merging data from two different uh, two different versions of ERPs, okay? which is another very common scenario that we see is uh, within like a migration scenario. I, I've, I've been running NAV for 20 years. Now I'm going to migrate to Business Central. Uh, how do I wanna deal with bringing that data in? Do I wanna merge it together? Do I wanna pull in 20 years of history? Typically that answer is no. So I'm gonna go through some examples of that. So let's, uh, let's take a peek here. Uh, like Andrew said, this is uh, an ETL tool, extract, transform, and load. So here is my extract layer right here under data sources. And uh, I'm connected to a business central data source. This is a, a special adapter that we actually wrote at Insight Software. Um, what makes it nice is because Business Central, the, the cloud version that is, is in the cloud, uh, you know, we don't have access to a database anymore, right? If a, a cloud-based system uh, hides that layer from, uh, from the customer, right? Basically all you do is you consume the product through a browser. Um, so what the, this adapter does is it allows you to link into your Business Central public cloud instance 
and it presents all of the tables and fields just as though it were a local database. Right? So you can see here uh, in, in this particular tool, on the left-hand side, these are all the tables and fields that I'm bringing in to my project. Okay? I can uh, select the customer table here. On the right-hand side, you can see all of the fields in that customer table. They're, they're available, but they're not included. Okay? Uh, we don't wanna, we don't wanna just pull in every single field, all of that data. We only wanna pull in what we're using. But what the Jet Data Manager does is it allows us to very easily uh, choose these uh, these data fields and work with the data, uh, even though it's um, even though the database is actually hidden from us, it's in the cloud. Okay. By the way, something that I I usually preface with a, with a regular demo is uh, what I'm showing you here is out of the box. Um, that, that's another another value add with Jet Analytics is that we've already created a um, a, a Jet Analytics project that points to most of the Dynamics ERPs uh, in uh, uh, most of the Dynamics ERPs, GP, NAV, and Business Central being a few of them, okay? a few of the major ones. So what we've done is we've gone through and we've already created this project. We've already mapped a lot of the fields and tables that you know a base Business Central shop would use, and we've already so so basically you have this head start. Uh, when you're when you're putting your BI solution together, and, um, uh, alternatively, uh, you would have to go through and spend the time and time and expense of uh, mapping out customer tables and vendor tables and and finance transaction tables and that kind of thing. A lot of that heavy lifting is already done here in our in our uh, BI project. But here's my customer table. Um, let's just say I wanted to pull in currency code into my project, it's right here. All I have to do is tick that box. It's gonna pull that code in, and then that's gonna be available in my project once I send that through the, the system, okay? So that's extract, okay? We'll come back to that in a minute when I add an additional data source. But up here in the staging area, I don't know if you recall that from what Andrew went through, our transform, in, uh, the, the T and ETL stands for transform, that happens up here in the staging area. You can do a lot of things in staging. Um, you can see this customer table turn red. That's because I made a change to it. I added that currency code. That change hasn't been processed through yet. Um, but you can do uh, things as simple as what you just saw me do, pull the currency code in. Uh, you can do things like uh, uh, table lookups and table joins. That's what these red fields represent. Uh, they're called conditional lookups, okay? So what I can do is I can go out to the salesperson table, I can grab the name and I can attach that to this customer table, okay? Makes it a lot easier for reporting. I can also do what are called field transformations. And basically I can go through, it presents me with like a, a, a SQL server scripting palette here. So I can basically, anything that you can do in SQL server, you can do inside of these field transformations. Okay? Makes it really, really flexible. Okay. So our final step in the ETL process is the load, the L in ETL. I'm gonna open up my data warehouse here. Okay. This is actually what my end users see. Okay. So one of the things that we do in a data warehouse is we rename things to make them more user-friendly. Okay, we've got a customer table here. Uh, where is that currency code? There it is. All I need to do is pull that guy over, maybe reorder it. Looks like it's named okay. If I wanted to change the name, I could easily do that here. And then once I go through and process that change, that currency code is gonna be uh, attached to my data warehouse table. The cubes that Andrew was uh, was showing you, I think he gave you an example off the finance cube. Those are right here. Okay. And without going into it too much, uh, this is actually one of the big strengths of the Jet Data Manager here is being able to work with these cube uh, dimensions and measures in the system. Makes it really easy. I can go in, I can use templates to create these measures. Uh, like for instance, if I wanted to do like a rolling 12, 
of a particular number in the system, all I'd have to do is fill out this template. It's going to script that process out for me, and it's going to deploy that off to the, the SQL platform in the background. Okay. So that's kind of in a nutshell, an ETL process. I'm going to close these down. So let's say that we wanted to add an additional data source. Let's say we have a CRM database that we're still maintaining some of the information on in our process. Okay, so here's my CRM database. I'm gonna verify that I can connect to it. I can go in here. I'm gonna read those objects in. Again, it's going out to the database and it's returning all the tables and fields. Let's say I wanna merge in some customer data, uh, uh, some account data in with my customer table. Maybe credit limit is still maintained in CRM. Okay. So I'm gonna tick credit limit here. Um, I happen to have a business central account number on that account table. Okay. So a couple of clicks, I've got those data points here. Okay. If I go up here into staging, there's my staging table that got created. I can go, I'm just gonna, drag this up on top of here so I can see what I'm doing. And then in order to get that credit limit on this customer table, all I need to do is drop it. Okay. It knows that there's no relationships. So do I want to set up a relationship? Yes. I want that number to be mapped to that field. My final step here is to go out and grab that credit limit. Pull it onto my data warehouse. Maybe I put a space in there to make it look a little prettier. Now, once I <clears throat> deploy that change out, my end users are gonna see that piece of data. They're not gonna know that that came from CRM. They don't really have to know that. That's what, that's what we're doing in the backend data model here. Okay. So, and finally, what I'd like to do is just talk a little bit about uh, migrations which is a really common scenario that we see uh, for, for data warehousing and, uh, and, and data management. Oftentimes when you're migrating from an older version of an ERP, uh, maybe you're only bringing in like a, a year's worth of history or maybe even less than that, maybe you're just bringing over balances or something like that. So what we can do with the Jet Data Manager and with Jet Analytics is we can pull the data in from your old ERP, from your legacy system, and we can kind of, we can either merge it in or have it live side by side in the data warehouse. So it's still online and, and uh, available for reporting, but it's not, uh, you, you don't have to maintain that separate ERP and you don't have to pull all of that data into your new ERP either. Okay. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. What I'll do here though, is I've got a nav instance right here. And as you can see, I've got similar objects between the staging area and the staging area of this nav system. Okay? And again, without going too deep into it, what I can do here in the finance transactions table, it's coming from Business Central, the GL entry table. Well, I've also got a GL entry table in my, my legacy system right here. And because those table structures are similar, I can click and I can drop that right on that finance transactions and I can do what's called a smart synchronize. What that does is it goes through and merges any of the data that it matches between those two systems. Okay. So now what I'm doing is I've got in this amount field, for instance, I'm merging the records in from that old system and, and with my new system. Again, my end users don't have to know that that happened. Um, we still keep track of where the data is coming from. We still have a company field and, and a source system. But the main takeaway is that it's really, really easy to do this kind of data merge here uh, with the tool. It makes it really, really efficient. Okay. Just a couple of general things before I turn it back over to Andrew. Um, uh, the system comes with a full set of uh, uh, data permissions that you can set. Um, uh, the permissions that we're setting are all SQL Server based, so it doesn't have its own security model. 
But what we can do is we can design security around the databases and the cubes, um, and then deploy that off to that Microsoft stack in the background, okay? Uh, what that means in, in layman's terms is, uh, if I connect to a cube within Jet Reports, like Andrew was doing, and I have security built around my login, that same security is gonna apply if I connect to that cube in Power BI. Okay? That security is gonna follow the users wherever they go. It makes it really easy to, to govern that data and, and make sure that only users are, uh, users are only seeing the data that they have access to, okay? And with that, I think I am going to stop sharing. Um, and you can see this is, you know, we saw the background, right? We saw what was happening on that back end piece, but um, how are we going to use that, right? We did a couple of examples before. Uh, I like to kind of show that back end and then go, okay, so this is how we're going to, how an end user, a finance team is going to be able to get in, there, get in there and use what we've done on the back end. Okay. So this is just an example of like a sales dashboard. Doesn't have to be sales, right? Could be financial, like I, uh, the kind of the example that I pulled before. But this is what Matthew had done, right, on the back end. So this is what your end users are going to see. Maybe order sales is coming from uh, that CRM uh, database you pulled up, but maybe average profit down here is coming from that, right? Um, end users don't have to know; they just know that they have the data points to pull into the report, and it makes it easy to go ahead and say, okay, I want to see. You know, the UK, how are we doing in the UK or different locations or different departments or by dimension, right? So here's by dimensions. Here's my corporate. These are demo dimensions, but, you know, you have dimensions that you use or in GP segments, things like that. So you're easily able to kind of toggle between all of those. Now, if I want to build something from scratch, right, maybe I want to go into my, um, maybe I want to do a tables, right? So that's a good example. Maybe I want to get into my tables. Um, my tables cube with Jet Analytics. I'm gonna pull something that's really tough to do sometimes with an aging table, right? So I'm gonna get into, you know, here are all my measures and dimensions. These are um, what the Jet Data Manager has kind of um, allowed end users to see here um, for lack of a better term. Maybe I wanna bring in amount, balance. Um, maybe I wanna bring in my aging table for sure, right? So I have, this is built in, right? So I have one to 30, 31 to 60, 61 to 90. So these are my aging tables um, to pull from. Now for, Vendor, maybe I want to pull in some vendors that we, you know, that owe money to us or something like that. Um, you can go ahead and start slicing it by, you know, whatever it might be. Um, let's go down to posting date, right? So I want to slice it by year. And maybe I want to slice it out by the vendor. So we'll go back up here to vendor. Okay, so I have my two slicers. We have our aging table over here. And what's nice is that you can, you know, come in here, Birmingham, Florida, whatever it might be. Here's what, here's the, you know, the vendor that we owe money to, and it gives you your amount and balance. But then we have um, the aging table, so that's one to 30, 31 to 60. You can go ahead and just, you know, move the aging table too, so maybe it looks better this way. So we have our aging table up here, and then we can go ahead and say, okay, what vendor do we owe money to? Maybe it is. Let's make this bigger. Maybe it is Pure Look, right? Now we can get a clean look into Pure Look. How do you know how much money do we owe them? One to 30, 31 to 60, that type of thing. So you can still go ahead and play around with it, interact with the with the data a lot easier. Okay. So example of a payables, we did you know the financial transactions, we did a sales report too. All right. Um, now what happens if we want to visualize this? You know, now we're looking at it in Excel and it's great, right? Because we're getting to the data really quickly. We're able to play around with it, no matter what kind of data that you're using, you know, it could be really anything. Um, but what happens if we want to visualize that data, okay? We're going to use um, Microsoft's Power BI. And what we're doing is we're consuming using that Jet Analytics background, right? We're using the same data, but we're going to use it in a data visualization platform, right? So this is an example of like an income statement that you can build, right? So maybe I just want to have a really quick peek into my business. I want to see 2017, how are we doing? Cost of goods versus budget, right? Everything's going to be related to each other. So it's going to render in the different graphs. Maybe I want to see December 2017, you know, get a little bit more granular, right? So there's examples of these um, that you can da actually download off of our website. Um, and again, you know, this has become really, really popular. Um, what we've seen is like, okay, we want to visualize the data. How do we do that? It becomes really tough if you're going, you know, trying to report directly against the database. But 
you know, right now we're using data analytics. So I've clicked through this, but you're probably wondering, okay, so how do we actually build something out that looks like this? Right, so I'm gonna to get to my clean sheet here. What I'm gonna do is hit get data. It's really, it makes it really simple. I mean, across the board, you know, consuming it in Excel, consuming it in Power BI or any data visualization tool you'd like. Right, I'm gonna to get to that same data warehouse and cubes that I was using in Excel, see, right here. And I'll keep it consistent. So I'll get into my sales cube. I'll open that up. It's truly the same thing as using it in Excel. So, but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose a visual. I'm gonna say, okay, what, how do I wanna see that data, right? I'm gonna open up my sales posted transactions. Maybe I wanna see sales by, uh, we'll come down here, pick a dimension, location. I wanna see sales by location, right? So we have sales by the different locations we have. Maybe I wanna pull a donut chart, right? Just a different kind of look. I'm gonna do profit percent. Right, by maybe the items that we sell. Okay. Well, let me do item category actually. That probably work. So the products that we sell. Okay. So now we have products, profit percent by items that we sell. We have the sales by location. And then you can get you can pull some pretty cool data visuals here. You know, maybe I want to do profit percent by the cities that we sell into. You know, these are just quick examples, right? Cities that we sell into. This is global data, so it's across the country or across the world. But if I come in here, you know, I can come in here and say, okay, how are we doing in Nashville, right? And then all the different charts are going to sort of render things like that. So it's really nice to be able to, you know, build out um, not only tabular Excel, um, Excel-based reports, but also visualize this. And then you want to pull in filter, right? So I'll go to um, posting date, and I want to see it by quarter. Okay. So I can go ahead and say, okay, how are we doing Q1? Q2, Q3, Q4, and you can go ahead and see, you know, how are we doing it by sales, right? It, same goes for um, financial data though. You know, it's the, it's kind of the same um, uh, process, right? Your financial data would be over here and you can start going ahead and building um, dashboards such as, you know, your finance income statements, balance sheets, things like that, okay? So I know that we're coming up, we have about 10 minutes left in, in the entire session. Um, and we've covered, you know, uh, both using uh, Jet Analytics um, in Excel as well as Power BI here with dashboarding. Um, I think the major takeaways here that I want to kind of finish up and wrap up with is, you know, uh, is those three points that I had before, right? <clears throat> and one was your data is growing, right? It's never going to stop. Um, so first things first, where do we get that? <clears throat> excuse me. How do we get that data into a place where we make it easy to report from, right? Um, you know, transactions and, you know, uh, the inventory that we have, uh, anything like that. I mean, that's always changing every day. So how do we get it into a place where we can really play around with it and see how we're doing that second, that day and make a key business decision, okay? That's what you're gonna be able to do with analytics. Um, govern and optimize, you know, governing the data is one thing. And that's what Matthew is kind of showing on the back end. We're pulling in data from one or multiple sources we're governing that in one place, right? You know, all that data lives in one place and you know, you're, as your end user, as you can see here, you know, you have access to that data and it's all gonna be the same across the organization. Um, in addition to that, it's how do I make my data work for me, right? Um, yes, you can get the data into a worksheet or into any other platform that you want, but how are we gonna be able to slice and dice that really quickly, you know, gain, gain those key insights and really drill in and get granular on um, certain, you know, KPIs that we're looking at. Okay, um, and that's what you're going to be able to do, you know, whether it's through a dashboard and visualizing like you see on my screen or, you know, in Excel, right? So it gives you, it's an open book, um, gives you the end users the ability to really get in there um, and create some, some really good uh, reports and dashboards you know, for the use of the organization, okay? So um, to that end, we are open for questions and uh, Q&A here. I think I saw something come in on the chat. Let me look at this. Oh, nothing in the chat right now. Was, were there any questions that anyone had around that entire process, whether it's you know, the more technical aspect on the background or the front end, um, how are we consuming the data? 
I see Katie's raised her hand. Katie, could you type into the chat um, or the Q&A what it is that you're looking for? Unfortunately, in webinar mode, we don't have the ability to converse back and forth. Oh, yeah. sorry, I clicked by accident. No worries, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> no worries. It was a lot of information. Well, anyone? Yeah, it definitely was a lot of information. Super dense stuff, but I appreciate um, how digestible you made it, Andrew and Matthew. I so appreciate your guys' time. Um, just for everyone who attended, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I will be sending out the replay of this as soon as it becomes available. So if there's anything that you want to reverse back onto, take a look a little bit deeper at or slow down, um, feel free. It'll be up on our YouTube channel and I'll send you the link directly, like I said, as soon as it becomes available. But if there's any questions that you think of in the meantime, I just went ahead and put up our general info at intellis.com. That email is monitored 24 seven and that can be triaged to get you to be put in contact with the right person on our team whether it's Danica who's joined us today um, or myself or a member of the account management team. Additionally, if you are an existing Intellis client, um, feel free to reach out to your point of contact directly. They all know that this uh, conversation has happened and should be able to um, handle whatever it is that you're looking for to um, understand a little bit further. And Andrew and his team are so graciously available to us at most times to do a more specific demo. So if you wanna see a little bit deeper in what it might look like for your organization, just shoot us a message and request that. We can absolutely get that organized for you and, um, and see how this might be able to problem solve some of the, some of the challenges that we know that uh, your organizations face um, diving into all of this data. All right, love to hear it. All well, right. thank you everyone again for joining us. Enjoy the rest of the day. And um, yeah, we are available to you at any time. Reach out with whatever you need. Have a good one, everyone. Bye now. Thank you. Have a great day. All right. Thanks so much.